Okay, welcome to episode 14 of this Let's Play series. We are playing Dwarf Fortress, the Steam version, of course. God, it's a good good game. i got to say, the, the job that they've done, actually, to uh, bring the graphics up the way that they actually have is really, really... It's so much better than I actually thought it was going to be. Anyway, uh, let's go... Th I mean, just with the description sort of matching, you know, the actual graphics that we see through here, for example, just little things like that. Is, uh, is exceptional, really. I, yeah, anyway, I won't go on raving about it. Anyway, special thank you again to my Patreon supporters and anybody else that has actually supported the channel over the uh, over the years. Uh, I'm very much appreciated. It's sort of, um, it's very humbling to be able to do this sort of stuff, and it's uh, I do appreciate that sort of support, so thank you guys for that. Uh, again, if you do want to like and subscribe, that certainly helps the channel uh, with the YouTube algorithm. Now, uh, with this one through here, uh, this is back to our inn again. So we've got like the inn back in through this side. You can sort of see it in through this side. Now, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to make a dining hall in through here. So your citizen will eat at this zone. Uh, we're not assigned to a particular citizen. Citizens without their own dining hall will eat here. Tables and adjacent chairs should be included. And so this is going to be essentially, I'm just going to go and grab this one and just going to add it in to, um, to this zone through here. So ultimately, I'm just going to go and create a, a dining hall that will then take in those different slots in through that side. Uh, so very, very small, just a 12, 12 area. I'm just going to accept that. And if we then go, it's overlapping the dining hall. I don't know if that will matter. Unnamed dining hall. I don't think that that's, I think that this actually still will work. I'll see what actually happens if it is some sort of problem. Assigning a new or existing location. We're going to assign that one to the snack of earth. So just go and grab that. It says overlapping, but I'm thinking that that will still be okay. If we just go back across and have a bit of a look there, we can sort of, um, we should see that they will still work there. I don't think that will have any impact on this one here. Yeah, it's overlapping to, there, it's sort of saying. Oh, we've got one person now moved in to the rented rooms. That's good. I think that this will still, even though we're getting an overlapping warning, I don't think that that's a problem. If it is, I'll get rid of it. And then we'll make a dining hall back over here. But uh, essentially, I want the dwarves to know to come into this area to actually move. Now, another thing I could do here would be to change this, I guess. I'm not sure if this would be okay to do this, but I could actually technically move that one out of there. If I just go back across into the zones and um, paint the zone and then just go to the to the reversal, I could actually go and, and do that, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> that way it's not actually overlapping it, but they still got to go through the zone to uh, to be there. I'm not sure if that will work. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little bit new for me. That's certainly we don't have the, me the warning message anymore. Have a quick look and see if this one's still, it's still a six by five. Everything else seems to be okay. So we've actually now just isolated that 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 um, area. What this one does, it actually then moves the so that the um, the 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 dwarves in the fortress will come and actually eat at this at this zone. They'll bring their food in here, and uh, and then what they'll that will, uh, and I could actually even get more. We've got a prepared food barrel there. That's enough really with that one, I think. But they will they will ultimately then just come and eat at this location, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, that way they have to socialize, which again will make their moods. You can see their moods are already very, very good uh, in this instance. You know, they're, they're, no one's gone into the negatives at this point in time. It's early days yet, but this is very, very positive, I've got to say. Uh, I did notice that she was, she seemed to be really happy. If we um, have a look at her uh, happiness in through there, we've got, um, so we've got the Fisher Dwarf and she's listening to a story at the moment. So she's extremely, extremely happy. Um, yeah, so both of these, anyway, they're just doing the other different bits of pieces. We've now got a few that are no longer doing jobs. I'm just going to go up and up to the top of the fortress, F1. And this is, of course, where we're just going to be building our small little area. Uh, now that we've actually got this bottom layer done, let's go and just keep on sort of working away. We've got um, somebody who will be constructing this area. I am going to go and create another one of the... We've got a construction there to be done, and I'm just going to go and now build another construction in through here and open up all this now for construction as well. So we'll just go back across to um, this task view in through this side and just go down to where we've got all of the suspended construction required. So I'm just going to have the dedicated guys that we had there last time bring these walls back onto line, and so they'll then go and build those. Um, we've still got some wood that's downstairs. They should be going and chopping this down as well. Uh, let's just unpause. I'll just let them play on as we as we go forward. Get them a little bit wary about being caught out through here. 
Uh, we'll just go back across and go to constructions and then paved road. Now we'll just make it this big. And I've only got three limestone, I just need two of them. Now I've made most of the other things. I might just use rock salt for this one. Although I have used limestone for a lot of this. Maybe just granite. Let's just use some granite. That way we're going to have it like a... In fact, that's now been built. That now goes down. This is nice and neat now. All the way down through here. And so I'll let them just again build the uh, build the areas in through this side. Now he's going to be building this one, which is great. Oh no, he's moving stuff off. He should be going in there. And I could actually even pave all of this as well ultimately, but I don't, I'm in no great rush to do that. Anyway, look, I might pause this until we sort of get this layer done. Okay, so we've got a whole lot of other fighters that are now going to be visiting as well. So they're going to be coming down into the fortress, then it's fine. I mean, we don't really sort of stop that from actually happening. Anyway, we're continuing on. We're nearly there now. Now, who have we got in here? There's an elf axeman. <laughs> okay, so he's uh, fairly well decked out. Um, items. Oops. It's not going any further than that. So, yeah, so he's, he's using wooden armor. That's okay. In you go. In you go. More elves, more human crossbowmen. They're all coming in to visit. Now we do need to get this one done. Um, it's I um, need to. Yeah, this one will. This will be initiated. They will come and do this one. Just want to make sure that nothing has been suspended, which it hasn't. So they should come back out and fix these up. And we're sort of getting this now much, much more secure than what we've had before. There we go. So now we have an area. Now, I will be wanting to make a floor, but this is more for cosmetics than anything. So I'm going to go to the next layer up now. And what we want to do is we want to go and create a um, essentially like a fortress up through in this top area, uh, ready for archers. Now, I'm just going to go across and build the flooring first. And, uh, and that way we can sort of be ready. And I'm going to have it so we've just got like a an area here where they can shoot down onto the layer below. So fortifications around the outside. I'm going to uh, create a, a line of, um, of walkways all the way around the outside as well with another room on the inside. It'll only be a small room, but that will be a storage room uh, for when they can put their bolts. And so this will be an archer's tower, essentially. So um, I'll explain why when I've, when I've done it, but essentially it's just going to be a matter of uh, going to constructions, going to floor. And I'll make this out of rock, I think. So we've got wood in the bottom area, but we make, we'll make this area out of rock. Now I'm just going to go and... This is be a little bit more complicated. I just need to go where we've got a lot of stone. Whoops, hang on, where are we going? I guess you could make it out of more out of logs. We could still keep on going and getting more and more logs if we needed to. Uh, although we do have a lot of granite, except these are fast. I think we'd make it out of logs. Just go and build that. Um, keep, on, keep on going. I kept on keep on meaning to um, Click on that one there, just so we can sort of do it. Now I don't need to go over the top of a wall. That will then that will then operate as a floor. So we don't need to actually add a, add a floor to that one. I'm just going to go all the way around. Add floor through here, Bayberry wood, Bayberry wood logs. Yep, just go all there. Again, I can just stop there. I can go over the top if I wanted to, but it's it's not necessary. It just saves me a little bit of wood. Come back this way. Baby wood logs. Go that way as well. Okay, and so that's going to um, that's going to give me like a, a walkway around the perimeter on the inside of where we're going to then have our fortification. So they'll then come back up. I'll just uh, pause this while they build this. All right, actually I forgot one little piece of wood there, but that's okay. We've still got enough now to be able to um, build what we need to build, pretty much. So, constructions, floor, and then bapery wood. And so uh, now what I want to do is, I now want to create like a, a an, an area around here, essentially where it's now blocked in with uh, with like a, a small uh, walls with a, with a walkway in and then we'll have a very very small chamber in here for just keeping bolts uh, for the arches and then we'll make the actual fortification on the outside here so we just go across and um, again just go to construction 
and go to going to the now what I, one thing I do like to do is just put wall in the into the corner here. So I'll make this again out of uh, Babery wood. So I just put a, an actual wall in the corner. Oops, I don't want to do that. And then we want to have fortifications now all the way around. So and we're just going to, and we'll, so we're one level up above the surface. We're now just going to put the uh, put this all up and through here, and this will allow us to then shoot down onto the onto the uh, people below. So we'll just go back across to the um, uh, construction again. So we don't need to put any more walls in. So the walls are in the corners, and we then just go back into here, and then we, we used um, again construction, but we now make fortifications. And so these actually, if I hover over that one, I'll just right click and just do that again. Constructions, fortifications. So fortification block creature movement, but allow projectiles through. Soldiers near fortifications are re reasonably safe from incoming projectiles. Requires boulder, block, or wood. And so they need to be standing right next to it. This is why I want the wall in behind them. So I want the wall behind so that they get pushed up against the actual fortification for when they're firing out, rather than them standing back and trying to fire out, because then they will miss. So um, by having some way of actually pushing them forward, now you can do that with statues and all sorts of different things. They can walk through statues, but you can actually use statues to just push them forward if they, if need be. And so we're just going to go this way. Now, it, this this may still not be a great idea because they may end up inside this this area. I might actually block this off completely and actually not even have it as a usable area. Um, that way they won't go in there. And so um, I might just block it off completely so there's just a, a, a useless space. Uh, and that will still make it much, much more useful for us to then use uh, in the fortress itself. So uh, let's just go back to fortifications. So back up through here and just start to uh, add these in. So we're getting better and better now with our security, but it's still open. Okay, and I will actually now create on the other side of this a wall so that there's only one little walkway all the way around here. And I can just put, make that one go next to a, um, actually this is now getting a fair way off. I might make this out of um, granite. It's a long way off, but let's just make this one out of rock. This, this middle bit. There's granite. There it is. Oops, no access. On the wrong layer, that's why. Okay, so we just get the walls established in through here. And so I'm just going to be blocking this one off completely. And um, again, just out of granite, just go to all and granite again. So I've now left a gap up above. That doesn't really matter at all because we're now going to go to the next layer up and just start the, the whole process again. Now I'm going to still leave a bit of a vulnerability up through here. So when we go to this layer, they're going to now build this one. We can now go to the layer above. Now we want to do something a bit different up here because actually I'll let them build this and we'll come back. Oh, a quick tip. <laughs> if you're going to be making these corner blocks and blocking it all in like this, they need to have orthogonal access to be able to build into the corner. So if we built this one here, we're not going to have orthogonal access into that one. So just go across and suspend construction for some of these blocks, just so that they can actually get those corner blocks built and then undo it. So I can't walk on top of that one. So you have to suspend this one over here. There's a there's nothing above that one, so they can't walk there anyway. So uh, I need to suspend that one so they can walk on the floor or on the wall underneath and then sort of uh, build that, that corner block. So I'll just leave all that where that is. All right, I'll pause again. Now, when these corners are built, we can then just go back in and resume construction of those other ones because at least they're in there. These ones I can't do just yet. I'll just let them continue on. Well, we've got a tree that's just grown right next to this. Now I want to stop this. So I want to, I don't want anything too close. So we do need to sort of maintain a, a border around our around our zones. And so we may even want to pave this a little bit around the outside at some point, but let's not rush that one just yet. Just 
keep them sort of building up through here. Right, just got a message that a bard is now visiting us. Now he will go and start to perform in the inn. Um, not that we need to worry about it. I'm not going to be, he, he may ask for residency. I'm not going to allow it at this point in time. It's sort of one of those things where it's not great value. There we go. We've now got this one as well. Let's just quickly go and resume construction of that one. So we're slowly getting everywhere that we need to go. Different visitors, are, there's a fox running around. <laughs> but the, uh, beasts can climb up the up the trees, that's why we need to just maintain it. And also if we're gonna have archers up here eventually, we wanna make sure this is a, a good killing zone. But these are all little saplings. That's probably, probably why we do wanna get like some sort of way of protecting the whole the whole fort. Anyway, I'll pause again. All right, we've just got an elven caravan that has now arrived. Um, they're not going to like us seeing us doing all this wood chopping and stuff, so we have to be a little bit careful of that. So they're going to be a little bit annoyed with us. Uh, there's all sorts of different things happening. I'll just let, allow those to go. Yeah, we've got some chrome, chrome man swordsmen, so this will be like an unusual animal type creature. They'll have to wander in this way anyway, so we can sort of watch them come in. Once we get all this secured properly, like we're going to be able to then sort of work on the on the aquifer ex access into the fortress quite quite readily, which would be good. And we might sort of then create other zones as well. Anyway, I'll um, pause until we're sort of ready to do the trading. There's the crow man. <laughs> he's 62 years old. He's a crow man swordsman. So he's coming in to visit. Um, he's uh, frail. In through here, we have a look. He does actually have a short sword, a bronze shield. So he's pretty well decked out. That's he's an interesting. So you've got these interesting sort of weird and wonderful fantasy type characters that you get to deal with. So we still haven't done this bit here yet. Here comes the caravan underneath. We'll wait until they get set up and then we'll start to bring things across. Merchants have arrived and are unloading their goods. That's okay. We can let them wait just a little bit longer. So while we wait for this to happen. Now we're at the corner, we can now resume construction of that one. That's the rock now done. Now the, being caught in a snowstorm makes them a little bit unhappy. So we've got a few of these guys that are unhappy. There we go, we just need these two now to be done. Just make sure that this hasn't been, yeah, that's still, that's still active. That is now active. So this is all our fortification, where it's got crenulations. We'll just now resume construction there. And that will be then that level. So what we'll now do is we'll just go across. We haven't really been cutting down much of the trees. I need to. I need them to chop more trees down, so I might just let them do their own thing for a little while. And um, then we go to the layer above. Then we've got a very special thing we need to do up in here to make this one secure. I might just, um, I'll just go down and and trade with the, the caravan. So I just press F2 and come back across. This is nice. We've actually really like taken everything back out of this zone now. Um, yeah, we've actually we're taking logs from everywhere and I don't want to do that. I'll just see how the logs are going down under here. We've still got the logs here, which is good. Uh, we're getting good furniture stockpiles in through here now. Um, nothing has been placed in here yet, so nothing of good enough quality. But there's a lot of goods in here, or not a lot, but there's a few goods in here that have now been jewel encrusted. And so this will be worth a lot. So we might just bring these sorts of things now up to the uh, to the trade caravan. This will actually then allow us to trade fairly readily. So when we come back into here, we'll just move the, the goods in. So we do, we, we, if we just go straight to bins, that's pretty much got the stuff that we want to do. Now we've got a, a gem bin, which I don't want to be doing, but the finished goods bin are worth a thousand. There will be some, some good stuff in there, so we'll grab that. Then we've got this one here with just four items, which is worth a fair bit as well. And that's about all we need to do, I think. There's nothing else we really want to be selling. So, um, and we'll be wanting to get um, chains or ropes will be something we do want to get from these guys. So we'll just go and right click on that one. I'll just make sure, yeah, waiting for two items. Wait for them to come, here they come. Don't know why the ropes are still there. There we go. So we'll now go and trade, trade, a broker requested at the depot. 
yep, here he is. So we've now got, we can now start to trade. So what we want is we do want to get like these, but I don't have a hell of a lot to sort of spend. I've got a lot of these. I might just see how they go. In fact, everything in that one there can be can be traded. Now they they won't take the bin, so don't trade the wooden any don't trade anything made out of wood with the elves at all. Even the bin that they come in. I made that mistake on my live stream actually. So uh, they'll just stop trading with you straight away. So don't just go, yep, yeah, everything in there can go. No. <laughs> <laughs> every individual item there can go but not the actual bin itself so they won't accept anything made out of wood they have like a, a religious ceremony to for the where the wood gives itself up essentially sort of that, that's sort of the that's my understanding of sort of how the take then goes so in this one in through here again just add the bits and pieces in then we'll sort of figure out we've got 1600 worth that we can do now is there anything really worthwhile we've got um sparrow we don't want a sparrow um, see how they've got grown wood it's all grown everything is grown so that's grown for their use as, as wood so it's very religious wood is for the elves so the elves are very much against anyone actually sort of doing anything with wood because they don't actually honor it the same way that they actually honor it but everything that they have is made of wood um, but yeah, nothing of that Jeez, there's not much in here actually that we really want um, got crutches yeah, Forgotten Beast Silk Rena Strings. <laughs> yeah, I won't get those. Let's actually worry about... Let's just go back up the top. There's not really a lot here that I want. I can't use proper bows. I can only use crossbows. Um, well, just for the sake of getting some sort of trade going, let's go and grab both of those. Let's go up and get the instruments as well. That's about it. That's all we really. That's all we can really take from here. Oh, they've got these as well. We grab these as well. So it goes up to five thirty-eight. So we've now given them too much. So let's just go and, and start to drop this one down until we get back to a reasonable number. Actually, that's now a loss for them. So let's just go across. That mug there is worth a thousand. So some of these other ones are worth. If I if I throw that one in there, and then just get rid of everything else. I mean, it gives them a hell of a lot of profit. Gives them a thousand, and they make a, they make a very handy profit. So what else can we get from them that may be worthwhile? Let's just go and throw a few few of these cages in. They may be worthwhile for us. A few oh they've got the buckets already. Wooden spear we don't really need. We don't really need much else. They've got um, these are not worth much to us. Let's just get these things as well. The trader's still making a profit, but you can see there it's turned to orange. Where he's now a bit more concerned. Let's just see if he'll accept this. Just go to trade. Now, we haven't traded anything at all that is contentious. I'll just make doubly sure. We've only got this one here, the, mud, uh, the mudstone mug. Trade, make the trade. So I must make a profit. There's simply not, not, not enough value here. So we need to add more in. Let's just go back up to some of these things. So they can push a. The, we'll try this one here. So the trader profit is now 484. Yeah, there we go. They're happy with that one. So that's good. Uh, we've made the trade, and that's just going to keep the elves a bit happier for a little while. The trader is no longer requested in through here, and uh, we then can sort of move all this stuff back into the fortress. Uh, in fact, what we can do is just go back into this area, go to bins, and just unclick those now, so they can go back into their respective locations. And that's done. So we've got that one established. Yeah, I would have liked more rope. We've got some remains and things. Actually, there's a cave swallow inside there. We've we got these things in here. Still haven't got anything in this, even though we've got them allocated for this. Not sure why not. Um, while we're here, let's just quickly finish this one off. I don't think we've got the uh, the traction benches at all. Just try it. No, we don't have any, of course. We don't have any any chain. So we do need to wait until we've got enough to be able to build the traction benches. We'll just go to furniture and then tables. So the tables are all, all done there. These are surgery tables. And in 
here. So I don't put doors on the on this on these little areas, but that'll then get the hospital a little bit better off. Just go to F1 again and just have a look back up the top through here. So we're now on this layer above that we're going to now start to sort of work. The thing with um, the thing with fortifications. Let's now uh, actually we're nearly at the end of this one. Yeah, no, let's finish this one off with this with this next part of it. So with the thing with fortifications, it comes up from the ground level. Now the 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 goblins can crawl up. The, the fortification itself. There's still a chance that they can fire through here, but if we're standing right up next to the fortification firing out, uh, we have a much, much better accuracy and we're firing down on top of them as well. So this is a good setup for us. And I think you can go one more level up as well if you wanted to, but uh, that's a good that's a good arrangement for, for, our, for our guys. The, um, the thing is we want them right up against the fortification, which is why I've got this wall in behind them. Now, if I had have put this is an open area where they could actually get it into it. Uh, there's, if I, when I give them the order to stand here, they can sort of stand anywhere within a within a five by five area. They may end up with some of them standing inside the storage room, and we don't want that. So now, now that there's nothing in here, there's no access into this point. They can only stand out around this particular area. So that will then sort of keep them in where we want them. So that's why I didn't bother putting any doors or anything into there. I could have actually done it where I blocked the door off. I could, could have actually left it open, blocked the door off, got them where they're standing and then opened the door. That could have been a viable one as well. We can always go back and do that. So, um, you know, could even just do it here and then sort of then just have this as a storage room. I'll think about that one for afterwards, but we like that's where we are there. Now, this next one through here, they can't walk on top of fortifications, but they can walk on top of walls. So we need to build now other walls, in th in other flooring and through this side. Now, because goblins and things can crawl up walls, they can actually crawl onto this surface in through here and then make their way in, but they can't go over a lip. So if they're sort of crawling up and then sort of hit a lip that's coming out above it, they can't go any higher up. So all we need to do is just go out one more layer out through here for, to finish this thing off. And so that's what we need to do. Just flooring will do, actually. Um, I, I might still build a, um, a crenulated area on the outside of that as well. Like So I'll build a fortification on the, on the actual top. And because uh, why not? <laughs> it's just still one block of wood all the way around. So uh, we we'll just go back into building again. And so just go to constructions and we've got the access point up into here. Just going to go to flooring. And now we're just going to go and create a two wide floor and through this side. Go and grab that one. And I still have Bavery wood logs. Now I'm going to run out of these pretty quickly. So let's just go and see how we go. Um, Ultimately, I'm going to be wanting these to be one. If I do that, no, sorry, I've got this one a bit wrong. If I do this one, I can then put the, the crenulated areas on the outside. So let's actually, let's ditch that. We just need to get the flooring essentially everywhere we, where we're standing. So all of this area. And again, baby wood logs. So we need to again go over the top of the uh, top of the fortifications. Uh, Babery wood logs. I've got five of them actually. I'll leave that there because we need to chop down more of these. I'll just let them build this. And I'll pause again. Oh, here we go. Oh, we, oh, we attracted no more migrants this season. So that often will happen. Um, yeah, so we're sort of stuck with what we've got. But uh, we're sort of we're doing the right thing with everything, so it's all sort of heading in the right direction. What the hell? There it is. There it is. Now we've seen it there. So that is the hand that we were talking about. It hasn't come inside. What the hell is it doing? Okay, so this is um, it, it didn't warn us about anything, so it's just wandered straight through the fortress. Well, I'm going to leave it here, guys. <laughs> We now have to consider what we're going to now do about this thing. I don't know what it will do. We'll have a bit of a look to see what what we know. Well, we already have seen the, the legend, but let's find out more about this particular one in the next episode because I actually have run out of time. But what a perfect time to leave it. We still haven't quite got what we needed. Now we've got one of our farmers. We've got uh, Chief Medical Dwarf is outside as well. Not very good, actually. This is not good at all. So I think I'm going to have to pull everyone back inside again. Um, 
I don't know if this thing can, cr can climb over the walls or not. I've got no idea. Anyway, I'll leave it there and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. I, I, I sort of like leaving it on these, uh, on these, uh, on these um, nail-biting finishes <laughs> to keep you uh, coming back for more.